For these three reasons, that is why I think this can be a Patek killer. What's up people, welcome to my channel. Today we'll be chatting about this potential Patek killer. Now the white gold case has a sandwich design with the center having a fluted case band that is hand finished and is hand wielded with the locks. The bezel and the case back have an identical pattern although they are in a reverse position. As you can see here, it has a dual step dome shape like design holding the flat sapphire crystal with AR coating. They are of course polished finish. This watch comes with a dark blue alligator strap with the same color stitching which has a beige calfskin leather on the reverse side to help with the comfort. The pin buckle here is made out of white gold. Both the pin buckle and the lugs are held on with screw bars instead of pin bars. There's even an additional screw at the bottom of the lug to ensure that the screw bars are tightly set. There are no crown guards on this watch. On the reverse side, you will see there is a break in the flank that helps to give a little room for your fingernail to pull out the signed crown. The transparent case back and the front showcases the Caliber 507DR1 which is a hand-wounded movement which is hand-decorated and engraved with Breguet's signature. Since we are talking about the movement, we might as well talk about the dial as well. The reason why this particular time-only timepiece is unique in the Breguet's collection is because it proudly presents all of Breguet's invention on the dial itself. One is that off-centered position of the hour and minute hands which is now part of the design language in most of Breguet's timepieces. Two is the use of the Breguet's hand on a guilloche disc with black Roman numerals and black wordings. I mean, come on! They are called the Breguet Hands. How much more iconic can you get? 3. It's the use of the parachute. This is the cone-shaped light pivots that holds the balance wheel in place with small dishes of matching shape mounted on the strip spring. This helps provide better shock protection. 4. It's the use of the Breguet's balance spring. To provide accuracy to the watch, in 1795, Breguet upgrades the spring's last coil and reduced its curvature to ensure the concentric development of the balance spring. 5. In 2016, Breguet further introduced the use of silicon balance spring and silicon Breguet overcoil to provide anti-magnetism, less prone to deformation caused by the pull of gravity, resistance to corrosion, less vulnerable to shocks, and to provide a lighter weight. 6. Is the use of a double silicon balance spring, which considerably improves the regulating performance of the watch and hence improves timing precision. The raw display on the dial and movement shows all the gears and wheels in its best refined form in a hand finished and hand decorated Breguet style. What I like about Breguet is that they have their way in designing their watches, challenging all conventional symmetries, and yet is able to create a design that isn't off putting or asymmetrical. To compensate on the complicating looking gears and wheels on the dial, Breguet decides to place a minimalist power reserve indicator on the dial and at the back of the movement. Talk about overcompensation. The dial is cast in white gold but galvanized in silver. The yellow gold gears and fire blue screws and hence maroon jewels all gives a good contrast to the dial. If you've enjoyed this video so far, please help a brother out by hitting that like, subscribe and bell icon to support the channel as it will really really help me in carrying on to make more videos like this. Thank you.
Now let's talk about what are my thoughts on this watch. First of all, I like the hand-finished rosette dial that creates not one, not two, but multiple guilloche patterns on it at several places. This is not easy to make. Imagine holding a rotating cutting tool and steadily guiding it on the gold plate to create the different patterns on the dial. Second of all, I like how Breguet's heritage is displayed throughout this piece. For example, the fluted case band that is cold rolled and then hand polished and the hand wielded lugs on this case. This old school technique of watchmaking is a rather tedious method which is now becoming a premium to have. Then there is also the Breguet's invention that is displayed throughout the dial itself as mentioned earlier. Lastly, I really like the polished finish on the chamfering or bevel on each bridge's barrels and slot for the screws. Even the gear wheels are all chamfered and polished. Patek doesn't even do that. I'm just saying. For these three reasons, that is why I think this can be a Patek killer. Especially at this price point. Visually, the thin wielded lugs may seem a little long and the 21mm strap size may not seem ideal for a 40mm diameter watch. However, I can understand why Brigade did what they did in keeping with those lug size, length and width for the purpose of maintaining a more elegantly looking and proportionally looking aesthetic. With broader lugs, it's probably better to have a narrower looking lug width, vice versa. So, what do you think? Do you think that this can be a Patek killer? What are the other similar pricing timepieces that you think come close to this? Let us know in the comments below. Again, just a reminder, if you like this kind of video, please like, share, subscribe and hit that bell icon to support me and I'll really appreciate it and promise to make more videos like this. Until the next one, thank you for watching.